way for him. Doing that curb will fill in the base of the curb. Just let it sit there, guys. And then we'll shovel the top in. It's only a three and a half inch high curb, just enough to catch a tire from going over the edge. As Steve shovels it in, Jim pulls the blocks up. Okay, I gotta get busy. Okay, that was 10 yards. Now we just have 10 more to go. I'm hoping 10 does this whole thing. Think it will. We're still pretty big. It gets skinny here, so it could be deceiving. I think we'll make it. What do you think? Got it? Number two's turning around right there. Pulling them in. We'll be done here. It's not even 7.30 yet. With the temperature being just over 30 degrees, windy and cold, uh, we're adding calcium chloride on the job site. I just put it in dry, making sure there's no clumps of calcium in the bag. The clumps don't dissolve, but when it's individual crystal, uh, that'll go into the mix and dissolve with a little bit of washing of the fins. Of course, make sure the hose is turned on from the night before because it's freezing. Hey. Uh, just washing the fins down with some water, water, giving it a good thorough mix, and that'll help generate heat in the concrete and let it set up there properly. We, we never exceed 2% calcium chloride. In this case, we're using 1% in this load to help it set up. Okay, here we go. Last pour of the driveway. We go. We hope. It's so pretty thick. We hope. Well, we can end it anywhere down there with cuts. Okay, with our number two truck starting to unload, we pick the rebar and wire mesh up into the concrete, as well as this is concrete with fiber mesh in it. So we have three layers of reinforcement going on. So as the guys rake it into position, I help them pick up the wire and I step forward into the straight edge. And you see how the guys are positioned around me. We have two sets of raking going on. We have two guys with the cement truck placing concrete, roughing it in, and then two rakers, one on each side of me, putting it pretty much right on the money. So I only have to pull back a little bit of concrete, leveling the top, filling in the tiniest of holes. And this allows me to one man the straight edge. I take a float with me, cleaning up my footprints back and forth, straight edging side to side. I bend down in the concrete, keeping my butt as low as I can. I don't bend over and put the strain on my back. This is important for you straight edgers out there. Uh, I've been doing this 35 years. Uh, I do have back pain, but I have 35 years of straight edging concrete. So this works for me. So I just wanted to pass that on to you guys straight edging. What do you think? Get as low as you can in the concrete and save that back. So we'll do this all the way to the end, filling in the low spots, putting it nice and even from side to side. Okay, finishing up the bull floating. Hey, it rolls in there real nice. We did come up short, so I got two yards coming for this last wing. We're gonna throw a tool cut right here on the edge and the new concrete. It's gonna be about a half an hour till he gets here. This is still really soft. 
but we'll see how it is at that point. We could always cut that back and put a bulkhead in there and end it. We'll, we'll, we'll play that by ear for right now. So the guys are edging right up there. And we'll get some cuts going. Okay, concrete's starting to tighten up a little bit. We did our 10 foot layout going up the sides. Once we got to our tight inside, we carried that measurement over. We always do our increments on the long outsides. That way our pads are no longer than 10 feet. If we do our 10 feet in the short side, time it goes across, now we're 12 or 14 feet, just a little bit too long. So Steve's waiting for me to give him some eyes on this. This driveway's turning, so you can't measure 10 and 10. Steve, that looks good to me. Or maybe down the hill to me a little bit. What do you think? Up. I'm saying down, so let's leave it there. So we just look at it from two different directions. I like it. Just right on up the hill. So we'll carry those cuts straight on up through that curb. Long strokes with a joiner, not short choppy ones. It won't get all wavy. Ready to start rubbing, Steve? Uh, not yet. Okay. And they'll slide at the gym and he can finish that side out. Good, Steve. Good. Okay, on to the next one. Jim's taking care of the curb. A little bump down there. What's going on? Okay, Steve's coming up. All of our cuts are here. Truck's here. We're pouring that little triangle. Okay, so this is our very first part where we started pouring. It's almost ready to broom. Curb's all rubbed up. We got one little sag right there, a little bump. I'm going to try and take care of that. Rolls up here real nice. I wanted to point out, we put a, the gas tap right in the middle of our cut. That way, it wants to crack off of that somewhere, it can go right in our control cut. This is all going pretty good. Finish the two yards up there. Let's see if I can get brooming and catch up to these guys. Alright, just touching up the joints. <sighs> Trying not to hit the curb. Man, it, this wind really picked up. Ah, come on. All right. All right, so first ten's done. Steve's doing the final touches on the broom, taking care of that little sag. It's looking better. All right, let's head up here and see what they're up to. Okay, I just pulled the pin knot. Now I can get the angle I need.
and a leaf. Okay, so we just come out on these blocks to touch up our joints. A little balancing act going on here. One more. What am I going to say? I was talking to the viewers. You didn't specify. I feel it's important when you get to these intersections, really take your time, put a lot of effort into making these intersections nice and clean, opened, trued, straight and shined up. Want those edges nice and full, no holes or gaps that dirt and de-icers can settle in and deteriorate the concrete. The tighter you can get these, the more durable the driveway will be in these joints. These joints want to crumble uh, with all the uh, sediment from the salts and de-icers laying in there, so get them sealed up as good as you can as well as look how nice that looks when you just put a little bit of effort into paying attention to the corners and making sure everything's nice and full nice and closed up okay so there's all the cuts all finished and cleaned up these are so long we're about 18 feet across so we have to put a center cut in there guaranteed it's going to want to crack in there somewhere so we don't want to dead end it we have to take it off that way that crack will come up and follow that right to the edge. Clip this off. Straight off there. And this is our two yard truck right at that seam. Cleaning up that. Let's head down to the driveway. When we were pouring this two days ago on Monday, it's Wednesday now, it's only been two days. We came up short on this square right here, and we put our joint right on our tool cut. That way you'll never see it. It's the exact same texture the whole way through that pad. A uh, little bit darker on the joints, but you can see those are all a little bit darker. That's just because of the sealer holding that moisture in there. That's all drying out nice and even. Not a bad way to run short. Here's another view from it. Right up the driveway. Same thing. We had this cut coming off of here. So we couldn't end this anywhere. It had to continue all the way off. So then we just took it to our center cut and wide it right off of the concrete. Now tomorrow... We'll cut these with the saw through the curb. Concrete's coming for the patio. That's exposed aggregate, so we'll talk you through that. Stay tuned. Okay, we are underway pouring the patio. Uh, you're crushing my chair. We were putting chairs in as we're going. He just ran that one over. Okay, I'll get a camera set up back here. He's going to come right around here. Yep. Our splash guards are on. Forward, forward, good. That's what we're looking for. Not that. Okay.
Okay, just pulled that over, shortened it up. Now Matt's pulling it down. Tom raking behind him. Jim taking care of the edge. Everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. Just looking at both ends, making sure they're down. I'm going to keep on bull floating. I attached the camera to the side of the bull float, so I'll take you for a ride. working right off the edge this has slope everything coming away from the house you guys check that right in there that looks flat that looks flat right there let's just check that out real quick okay so we just check some things all we did was drop this a little bit and we raised it a little bit at the house and got some good slope coming off and i don't it was very very minor okay jim is just putting the final touches on the patio jim did you finish this whole patio by yourself no there was four of us here <laughs> you could have taken all the credit he did a lot of it though little inch and a half sill up there with the slope of the patio that gave us a two and a half inch sill out here so that's how we're going to leave it for tonight we did a cut corner to post corner straight back to the wall and we wet stab those so we got good relief there and then front, we could have just brought them straight and that would look okay. But I think that really makes it look nice if we give, give those a slight angle. As well as this concrete wants to dry to the center. So all the stress is pulling it that way. That's how it kind of wants to crack right there. And we wet stab that as well. So now I'm going to spray on my surface retarder. Somebody drinking wine? Uh, we'll get a saw cut tomorrow. Center a door. Center a door. And corner out. Divide this up into four squares. Two squares. So I'll get this on. And that'll be it for today. I think it's still about... 40 degrees. It's really cold out here today. So what do you say, Matt? Is the next episode going to be <laughs> how to jack him around a patio? <laughs> That's like the most Pittsburgh East thing you say. On the house. Pass. Pass. <laughs> Don't worry, people, that's all gonna wash off. We hope. I hope. So you get this hard to reach places. Okay, well that's how we're leaving this for tonight. If it doesn't work, at least it's a nice color of blue. Yeah, neon. So that's supposedly we don't have to uh, cover up and that's gonna wash the top right off. See you in the morning. Okay, so here we are the next morning. 
it's about 30 degrees out it's pretty cold got pretty cold last night just just at that freezing mark we've never used this product before really i kind of like the blue we ought to just leave the blue on there oh, the European blue yeah so you can see how the surface just scratches right off so what was nice about this our other product we use we'd have to cover this all with black plastic this stuff they claim we do not have to cover it and it seems to be working so steve did lay out i got here too late he had it all done 30 years of being told to hurry up i don't know what you want from me it's not cut yet I knew it. You told me. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So, corner of door, straight out. We put those cuts in to get it through the night. If I zoom in on this, you might be able to see a hairline crack in there. I don't. That's good. So, same thing. Doors, and then down the post. So we'll go ahead and get the saw cutting done, and then start power washing. Okay, there's all the saw cutting all done. Cut pretty nice, Steve? Yeah, yeah, cut real nice. Like to cut these within 24 hours. Quicker if we can. So good, hooking up the pressure washer. A little bit, a couple more forms to carry up top. We'll be cleaning shortly. Okay, we're just getting started. Boy, it is coming right off. A little bit too noisy right there I just wanted to show you how it is coming off all that stone it's quite cleaning off real nice if I could I'd put a shield there and keep it off of there to begin with but we can't reach it when we're putting the material on we could hang plastic but that always falls in the concrete while we're working Best thing is just clean it thoroughly when we're done. And it is coming right off. Real nice texture, not too deep, but deep enough. You can see all the aggregate nice and even across there. Saw cuts nice and straight. All right. Maybe I'll leave the phone with Steve. And you can watch him do this. I'm going to head over and get our next project going. Ooh, you got me. You mad at me? Okay, so there it is. Cuts are in. Patio is completely power washed and exposed. Uh, we went through and like you guys saw, I made sure I hit all of the doors and windows and stonework, lamps, 
uh, lights, gutters, downspouts, uh, those posts, everything. Because when you start power washing this exposed aggregate, that slurry just goes everywhere. So, my advice to anybody who has never done exposed aggregate before and thinks it's easy, just be prepared to wash the same spot uh, 16 times before it's actually done because that's what you're gonna do. Um, now, if you saw, I was kind of starting like on this set, this pad here. Let me go up in the shade. Uh, I would start here, wash this off, then I'd go up to the next pad, start up there and wash that off. And then, you know, you just kind of work it from the edge back. And I do this because I believe it's quicker. That way, if you start in the back and work this way, all of that slurry that you're blowing off, it just keeps accumulating and building up. So you're pushing more and more and more and it just, it becomes slower. It's a little bit more difficult. And then you really, it's in my opinion, it's harder to actually see the exposed aggregate as you're washing it off. So doing it this way keeps the amount of slurry you're pushing to a minimum. And then, you know, you get to wash spots multiple times to make sure you get as much of that cream coating as possible. So, with all that being said, the last step for this one is to wait for it to dry, wait for the temperature to pick up a little bit, and get it sealed. So, thank you guys for tuning back into another episode of Concrete with the Hosses. If you liked what you saw, click the like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.